Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. Hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show, or some of you may be watching it on YouTube, uh, the podcast. I do a video version on YouTube. I got a lot of people that know my fishing channel from there. Also got a lot of people that have picked me up on the all the podcast platforms out there. So wherever you are listening to this or watching it, Thank you. If you're a returning viewer or listener, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. And uh, for all you new folks, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're going to like this one. This one is uh, might be a little bit tough to do in the sense that hopefully I don't make some people mad in the process of doing it. Uh, I just got back from the Catfish Conference uh, that went on uh, out in Louisville, Kentucky. Great show this year. They did uh, an amazing job. A little bit bigger space at the uh, Expo Center there in Louisville. And uh, a lot of vendors, some did not make it. We're still having people that are having some uh, fulfillment issues. And uh, there were some folks that didn't make it. But uh, a great crowd, amazing crowd, Friday and Saturday. I got to meet some of you folks that stopped by. Always fun talking with the people that listen to the podcast, watch the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I had a few guide trip clients that were there from other parts, so it's great seeing everybody. Appreciate everybody that took the time to come over and say hello, and uh, it was uh, it, it was it was a good deal. The show's back up; it's swinging. Uh, a little bit of new stuff, a lot of stuff the same. Uh, you know, a lot of the same vendors. No real big dramatic changes there. Uh, but they added a couple of things this year. Uh, the first one was uh, the Palmetto Cats uh, YouTube channel does a YouTube awards deal is for uh, folks that have YouTube channels, do catfishing videos uh, and fishing videos. And uh, they have done their awards, I think, for two years now. And uh, this year, they weren't able to do it last year because of COVID, and uh, they actually did the awards a little bit early. Uh, COVID obviously had everything kind of all messed up. But this year, they actually did their awards presentation at the show, which was really great for the people that were able to hang around. Uh, they got to meet some of these, uh, you know, YouTube uh, creators that have fishing content out there. Stupid me had the time wrong. And uh, for some reason, I thought it was happening at 6 o'clock, and it was at 5, and I was over in my little space taping a podcast with some people, and I said, I'm going to go over there and watch the show, and... I think there were, I got there in time to see Keith from Fishing and Stuff win the God's Greatest YouTube Creator Ever Award. So uh, it was like the final one. Congratulations to Keith. I think he cleaned up again this year on uh, on awards there, and deservedly so. He puts out some great content and some great videos. Uh, but that was one of the cool things uh, that they added this year. What I think was great. Still had the catfish uh, cook-off deal. Uh, one thing, another thing that they added, which is kind of what this podcast is about, was the YouTube, I'm sorry, the ACA, American Catfishing Association Awards Banquet. And uh, they had several things. In case y'all don't know, um, some folks may not be familiar with it. The American Catfishing Association is basically a group for catfish anglers. Uh, it's only been around a couple of years, so uh, and you probably haven't heard too much about it. I think COVID kind of stifled some of the growth and things they had planned to do. Uh, but in the big picture, it's a organization similar to like uh, Trout Unlimited, Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation, uh, the NRA, that would basically be a voice a collective voice for the catfish community um it's something that the catfish community has needed uh it's something people have tried to do uh without much success um and this is the first nationwide organization that has really gotten any traction whatsoever um so far it has mainly been tournament fishing oriented and uh it's something that i've said from the beginning um it's going to be tough to make it as an organization just doing that at the national level because there's too many local tournaments doing a great job by themselves. But that has been their focus so far. Uh, my big thing, and a lot of people want to see efforts put into com conservation, protection of the resources, getting laws implemented, helping with research. 
we've seen a little bit of dabbling uh, in that uh, from them, but not a lot. And I'm hoping that is something that moving forward, uh, I'm very optimistic and hopeful that there's going to be expansion in that area because I think that's what it's going to take to get a lot of you guys willing to pony up the money to become a member of this organization. In all fairness, uh, I am a member of this organization. So uh, keep that in mind as I offer what are opinions from uh, my side uh, on what I'm about to say. And uh, yeah, that's where we're kind of going with it. So I know that seems a whole lot of uh, build up for something that sounds terrible. It's really not terrible. Uh, just making sure that the volume was down on my computer here so it doesn't beep in because the phone's been ringing off the hook. And it's been ringing off the hook about the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I had a bunch of people call me. Um, as soon as I left from there, uh, I did not hang around for the ceremony that night. I had a uh, meeting with somebody, so I didn't get to see the ACA awards. They also gave away a boat, by the way, um, a boat that went to one of the tournament anglers. Um, you basically were able to earn drawing numbers, basically. Uh, you got your name in the pot the more you fished. And uh, uh, a tournament angler won it. Supposedly, that's going to change next year, and it will be available to any AC member as it should be. Uh, I think that uh, boat giveaway should go to anybody who pays the money. Obviously, if you fish a tournament, you put more money into it, you could you know get more tickets in the hat, so to speak. But they did give away a boat. But I, I was I left and didn't get to see the ceremony. And the next day I had some people ask me about it, which I wasn't familiar with what was going on. And I basically just kind of, uh, I didn't have a good answer. This week I started getting calls, but I was out of town working. So I didn't really look into it and started looking into it. And what it comes down to is they created a Hall of Fame, which is really cool. Uh, that's something that I, I think our industry needs, and I think it's uh, it's a cool deal. It's a cool deal for, uh, to make sure that some people are recognized for what they do to the catfishing community. So uh, good job, ACA, on creating this Hall of Fame. Now, is it an actual building like the Baseball Hall of Fame or something like that? No, no, we're not at that level. Even though I'm thinking it's going to end up there will be some kind of section at the Pyramid and Bass Pro Shops in Memphis. That's my prediction on where this thing winds up at. But they had the initial Hall of Fame inductees ceremony. And I've covered some of these inductions for sports Hall of Fames. Uh, we did a lot of stuff leading up to the NASCAR Hall of Fame that was is relatively new. Um, and getting an initial class of inductees is always like a tough one because you have such a body of people and it's like who do you pick who do you pick as the initial ones uh you know with nascar uh any of y'all that are nascar fans it was people like richard petty dale earnhardt uh junior johnson it was some of the biggest names in the sport names that people outside of the sport actually recognize uh one thing about the catfish world is um it's not exactly something to where you can go up to some people on the street and ask them. But I did do that and uh, trying to get some feedback. I also, over the past week, uh, with some of these folks that have been calling, um, and, and the whole title of this podcast and video is basically the reaction I was getting from people is, what the heck was the American Catfish and Association thinking when they picked these people? Well, listen, there's always going to be some criticism on something like this. There's always going to be criticism on who gets inducted into a Hall of Fame. Uh, because, you know, there's different criteria. I don't know what the criteria is. We'll get into that in a second. We'll also get into, se into how they came up with these names. Uh, but there's always some criticism and, you know, you, you don't like this guy. He doesn't deserve it yet. He should have already been in there. They're looking over this. That's going to happen. We understand that. They had a big challenge with the first class. Uh, it, they, you know, I probably would have went with less people. Looking at my notes, they added eight people in the initial class. And uh, from what I understand, they're going to add three a year after this, I think. Uh, I went to the ACA website, uh, the actual Facebook page, 
And uh, there's some videos on there. I invite you to go to the ACA Facebook page, American Catfishing Association. They have a Facebook page. There's some videos up there. Glenn, the guy who runs this organization, uh, outlines how they came up with picking the initial list. And I'm going to kind of in summary go over it. I invite you to go yourself, listen to it if you're really interested and see exactly in detail. But basically, the American Catfishing Association has what they call an advisory council. These are a select hand gr handpicked group of people that are in on the decision making that goes on in this group. Uh, Bill Dance is one of them. Brian St. Anna, George Young. Glenn, the guy who runs the organization, Jason McDuffie from B&M Rods, uh, Nick DeShano, Steve Miller, and Steve Henderson from CR Boats. Uh, a lot of these people, you have no clue who they are, and uh, that's both good and bad. Some of the people have leadership positions in some big companies, uh, so they've got a good overview of some of the economics, the politics, uh, the financial side of running an organization. So having people in there that know nothing or very little about fishing for catfish can be a good thing, um, at least when it comes to running the business side. On some of the other things, uh, you can make an argument that perhaps they should have a little, some people at a little closer a little closer to the fishing rod, a little closer to the water, a little closer to the cut bait uh, for a little different perspective. But listen, that's their decision. They're going to do that the way they want to. And that's just the way it is. These people are the ones who came up with basically, from what I understand, a list of suggestions for this initial class of Hall of Fame candidates. Uh, a lot of people, I'm sure. And they came up with these people, narrowed it down, basically took a vote, vote on it, and they came up with eight people uh, on this list. Now, I invite all of you to sit down with a piece of paper and come up with just five people that you would put into a catfishing hall of fame. Uh, we don't know what their criteria is. There's not a lot of information given out on how they came up with these people, what they even base this on. Uh, most organizations have something to the effect, and I would too if I was doing this, you need people in there who have a positive impact on the sport. Uh, and, you know, somebody who has impacted it in a way that is of significance. Uh, you know, in the sports, that could be somebody who has won the most Super Bowls or has thrown the most yards or hit the most home runs. Uh, it can also be people who not necessarily were on the playing field, but outside of it that affected it. Somebody like a coach, uh, you know, somebody, uh, you know, there's actually a sports writers hall of fame for some of these people who create some of these stories and stuff about some of these organizations. And some of them, I think NASCAR even includes a, somebody like a sports writer type, uh, person from that side too in there. But that would be my thing. So think about that for a second while you're listening. Think of five people, think of three that kind of come to mind as being that guy made a huge impact on the sport. I spent the time today driving back from Nashville, talking to some people about that. I threw it out there and the answers were interesting. The most interesting thing was there was only out of everybody I talked to, probably 15 people, there was only one of the people who made it in to the Hall of Fame was on the list. And that person is Steve Douglas. Uh, Steve Douglas, for you, those of you that don't know, you're probably very new to the sport of catfishing. Um, he started out as a fisherman, uh, actually taped a podcast with Steve, uh, kind of telling his whole story out at the Catfish Conference this year. I'll have that out in a couple weeks. But uh, Steve started out fishing, fishing catfish tournaments. Uh, basically didn't like the rod holders that were available uh, for the catfish rods that, you know, a lot of us use. And what he said, it was the bigger handled rods, the rod holders that were out there. So he started making his own for himself. Some guys wanted them. He started selling them. His company got bigger and bigger, bigger. And it's a major distributor of not only rod holders now, but nets, cutting boards, uh, clothing, monster rod holders is Steve Douglas's company. 
it didn't stop there with Steve. Uh, Steve also created a YouTube channel. A lot of the videos that you will see out there when you look for catfishing content will be created by Steve Douglas. Had a huge impact on the sport as far as education goes, uh, creating some enthusiasm. So, and it doesn't stop there. He's the one that created the Catfish Conference. He and some other people came together and said, hey, we need like a little gathering for catfish people, people in the industry. And that now has grown into a very large show. It will be bigger next year. It is expanding to other cities, may even be expanding to some other cities down the road. So hands down, Steve Douglas was one that I think, and a lot of the folks I talk to think, and I think most of you that are probably listening to this podcast will agree, hands down, Steve needs to be in there. He's a pretty humble guy, probably will deny, oh yeah, I don't need to do, be in there, but Major impact on the sport, no-brainer on getting into the Catfishing Hall of Fame. Sip of water, because I'm talking a lot. Um, another one that some people have kind of forgotten about that I think should be in there, and it made my list, um, he was a lot more significant when I was first starting out fishing. Uh, had a lot more. He, he was just more relevant then, and that's Phil King. He's a tournament angler, uh, was kind of the face for tournament fishing uh, early on, uh, got notoriety and popularity in some of the printed publications because that's where you heard about any catfishing that went on, and uh, he was kind of a name. He was kind of, you know, the guy. He had won some uh, major tournaments, and he was kind of a name. He is somebody I agree that I, if he was putting my list together, it would have been him. He would have been one of them. Um, another one that I was impressed made it because this is one that was on my list, and then I found out he actually made it in. This was really good, and that's Keith Catfish Sutton. If you've um, if you've read any articles back in the day when it was magazines that you had to look at, uh, if you ever, if you've got a catfishing book, it's probably written by him. Uh, he's a sports writer that basically put catfish in print. Uh, a lot of articles about fishing for catfish. Uh, a lot of us learned a lot uh, in what little information was out there back in the day. Uh, his books were very comprehensive on everything about fishing for catfish from baits to rigs. Great photos, great illustrations and these things. He had a major impact in, on the sport of fishing for catfish. Those three, to me, are shoe-ins, no-brainers. Now, some of the, the next few, and this is no discredit to any of them, but where some of the confusion and questions, I think, come in from a lot of people is that... Three of these people, a bunch of people have no clue who they are. And um, two, uh, one of them you'll know, and the other one you'll know once I explain. Uh, but three of them were tournament anglers. Modern era, um, and that's pretty much what their deal is. Now, I will say this. Uh, if you go to the ACA Facebook page, uh, there is a very good video in there where Glenn does short little two, three minute bios on each of these people. And it goes into greater detail than the summary I'm giving you here about what they did in the tournament world and tournament fishing. Um, and I'll say this, um, in my opinion, they will, on my list, they would have been in there at some point. They would have not been on the short one just because I think of the notoriety of just having people in there that are, mm, I'm, I, maybe a bigger name, uh, something more of, of an impact. Because, And I say this because the tournament world is small. It's a very small percentage of the people that are out there fishing. And in my opinion, it takes a lot to get any traction, presence, media dominance, anything in the tournament world to where you can have an impact on the sport. Um, that's my opinion. Some people feel differently. But with that said, the ACA right now is about tournament fishing. So I can, I would think that was probably part of the reason they tried to put tournament anglers in there so that people knew who these people were. One's John Jameson, great fisherman. Uh, and the other one, two, it's two of them, Daryl and Jason Massengill, who are uh, tournament anglers. Um, great fishermen. 
all three of them, great fishermen. Kick my butt any day of the week if I was fishing in a tournament against them. Uh, great fishermen. I think they deserve to be in there at some point. But that's where some of the confusion and what the heck is the ACA thinking uh, came from. Now, the next two is where I really have to wonder why they picked these two people. And this is where I probably upset some folks out there but hear me out on what i'm gonna say because i think if you look at it from my perspective it may make some sense first one i'm just going to get it out there bill dance bill dance was one of the people who was inducted in the catfishing hall of fame bill dance great fisherman uh tv personality uh i don't know him i've never met him i don't know if he's a good person or not Heard good things about him. Uh, just his career, he transcends bass fishing. He transcends fishing. People know who he is outside of the fishing world. Uh, people, most people, he's almost like a Richard Petty. You look at Richard Petty, you may not know he drove in NASCAR, but that guy's a race car driver and he drives a race car. You know, see, people see Bill Dance with his Tennessee hat on. You're going to go, he's a. He, he's a fisherman guy. He's got them blooper videos. With that said, I don't know if he's on the initial class to get into the Catfishing Hall of Fame. Uh, that's terrible. I, I know, and this is where people are, are clicking out of the video. They are throwing darts at my name and my face. But I personally don't think yet. I think at some point, I think, you know, he probably was one of the first guys to put catfishing in a tv show uh you know there was we'd always when we watch the show there'd be a show every couple years to where he'd go fishing for catfish um but i don't know i don't know i i'm i'm i don't know if he'd be on my short list to make it into the hall of fame on the first class um there's some other people i'm going to get to in a minute that i think should eclipse him um the next one I have no idea why he's in there. Nice enough guy. I've talked to him a couple of times in passing. I'm not friends with him or on his speed dial list by any means. He does not know who I am. But that's Johnny Morris from Bass Pro Shops. And he was inducted into the Catfishing Hall of Fame. And that's one that a lot of people were like really shaking their heads. Um, again, I, 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 go watch the videos. Go to the ACA Facebook page. Watch the video. Glenn gives a bio on them, and Glenn does a very good job of writing these things up and thinking them. But he is probably, out of everybody, the last one that I would put into the Hall of Fame. I don't even know if he would make my top 10 or 20 as far as people who have had an impact on the sport. He owns Bass Pro Shop. He's a billionaire. He's bought up all kinds of companies, uh, probably sold more catfishing rods and ugly sticks than anybody else in the world. And he always has that nice big tank that's got a big catfish in it in a lot of places. But I don't think he is Hall of Fame material on the first class for this organization. So those are the two there that, like I said, may ruffle some feathers. But that's my opinion on it. It's also what I was hearing from a lot of people. And uh, again, I think there are probably reasons that these people were put in there uh, bigger than just the impact, I think, some of the ties to the organization. Uh, as a matter of fact, Bill Dance is on the advisory council for uh, for the American Catfishing Association, the, Ameri uh, the advisory council that picked the people for the Hall of Fame. And Bill Dance is also good friends with Johnny Moore, so that probably you know, impacted that. In my opinion, uh, some people I would like to see into the Catfishing Hall of Fame in the first class. One would be a guy named Ed Davis. Uh, he's from Eastern North Carolina. Uh, he has long passed away, but uh, he's holds more IGFA records, line class records for catching catfish than anybody else. Uh, I think he had the world record at one time, or at least a North Carolina record. Uh, somebody like that angler that was an angler before it was like cool to fish for catfish uh and you know was able to catch you know those record fish somebody that stood to some of these world record holders uh wh whaley who's got the world record channel catfish i mean that 
fish has stood the test of time. Uh, that fish is, what, 50, 50 year old, you know, world record for a channel catfish. Those are some uh, significant milestones in the fishing world. Uh, heck, Nick Anderson, the guy who's got the world record, 143 pounds. I mean, we, we went from fish that were in the 120s to all of, you know, 130, boom, 13 pounds more, and you're up into the 140s on a fish. Uh, I think that's a little more, I, I, for me, I think initial class, I think those benchmark landmark people, I would have put in there ahead of uh, those last two. So uh, there's others. Uh, I think the tournament guys, the, there'll be some of them along the way. Uh, one of them that I think is going to go in there, um, Zach Royce. I think Zach Royce with what he did uh, catching two state record fish within a 24 48 hour period uh heck he's in ripley's believe it or not uh so uh i think that's hall of fame uh material right there luke nichols from catfish and carp uh a youtube personality channel youtube creator uh you know he's i don't know where his numbers are now he's probably got eight hundred thousand followers on youtube a major major impact in the sport, especially in the modern world of technology, social media, he has had a major, major impact on the sport. People fishing, people trying to fish, strawberry, jello, chicken. Uh, he did that first, not me, just to clear that up. Uh, major impact on the sport. I would have put him in ahead of Bill Dance and Johnny Morris. So uh, that list can go on. Those are a few of mine that I think uh, should have been in there. But that's kind of what was bubbling all week that I was hearing outside of the circle there of everybody. Uh, you know, here's the deal. These things, the, these Hall of Fame deals, um, there's always going to be a little, uh, I ain't going to call it controversy because it's not really controversial. There's going to be a little bit of disagreement. Uh, they don't deserve it. They don't deserve it yet. They hadn't done anything. Somebody's done more. So that's all this is. Um, it, it is interesting, uh, some of their picks. Uh, like I said, I would have went a different route, but uh, I think three of them definitely on the list for this time. Like I said, I would have probably done five people, but I think eight's a little bit big and a little bit digging it. But um, supposedly in the future, they're somehow going to narrow this list down through the advisory committee, and then it's going out to the membership to vote. I sort of kind of have a problem with that uh, because it kind of becomes a popularity contest at that point. And uh, I do think there needs to be a committee. I think probably a little better diversity in who they've got on the committees and some people that have a little bit better view are a little bit closer to the rod, as I said earlier, a little bit closer to the cut bait uh, with the catfish community and what goes on and the history of fishing for catfish and, you know, going back. I think we've, Based on this list, it's a very right now list that they're looking at. You know, all these people are alive. Uh, they're all, you know, around. And there were people before these eight that had an impact on this sport. And I think it would have been good in that first class to get some of those people and get some of those folks in there. Um, you know, well, I think we need some folks that are going to think outside of who's out there right now and who we're trying to um, – who were trying to uh, think outside the box. I'm going to stop with that. Uh, I think this is still fun. Uh, I think it will be uh, interesting to see what they have uh, at wherever the Hall of Fame ends up landing at. Uh, hopefully they have big bronze busts of everybody, you know, there like they have in uh, wherever the Baseball Hall of Fame. Where is that, Cleveland, something like that? Uh, no. Uh, anyway, I, I don't remember. Uh, but no, it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That's what is there. Uh but yeah, that's kind of my take on it. Uh, hopefully that makes a little bit better sense for some of the people who are reaching out to me and asking about this stuff. Like I said, I didn't know exactly what the details were. I looked into it uh, to see what was going on, and uh, that's kind of what I got. I purposely did not bring uh, Glenn on here. Uh, uh, sorry, Glenn. You know I love you. Uh, welcome to have you on at some point, but uh, I, I knew... I, in all fairness, I kind of know what the talking points from Glenn are going to be on this, and you can get all of that on the ACA Facebook page. Uh, so I just want to give you my opinion on this, uh, my opinion editorial piece, 
And uh, hopefully you find it interesting and some good info. Check out the ACA, American Catfishing Association. Go to their website. Uh, consider joining, if you will. Um, if nothing else, for a few years uh, and force their hand to do something for conservation. Uh, if you don't like what you're seeing uh, at that point, then spend your money elsewhere. But uh, I, I, I would like, it would be great if you could. I'd like to give the organization a chance to, uh, to do some stuff in the conservation side as much as they are doing in the tournament world. The tournament deal is... I'm going to say the low-hanging fruit as far as money to run this organization. and um, But I think for it to be sustainable, they're going to need more of the rank-and-file catfish anglers out there. And about the only thing they have to offer them is protecting the resource and protecting the sport. So give them a chance. Uh, consider joining. Uh, and like I said, hold their feet to the fire. Uh, you can contact them. You can reach out to them. If you have a hard problem, trouble getting through to them, Hit me up, private message me. I'll make sure whatever you want to say to them gets to them. And we might even bring them here on the podcast and on the YouTube channel. Until then, we'll catch you on the water. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.